If you want to fast track your GA4, Google Analytics 4 knowledge and skills, you're in the right place. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to start using GA4. You will learn how to use the most important reports in Google Analytics. We will cover important terminology, plus you'll walk through five key configuration settings you should check to make sure your setup is working and collecting meaningful data. This tutorial is perfect if you're just starting out or if you're coming back to GA4 and need a refresher. And when you're ready to learn even more, I've included links to my full tutorials and courses in the description below. Okay, we're going to start by exploring the GA4 reports. Let's head to Google Analytics. We're going to use Google's demo property to walk through the reports. I've already opened this and we're looking at the home report. This report provides a top level overview of your website. At the top, we can see the total number of active users, events, key events, and purchases. Active users tells you the number of people who've been on your website in the selected date range. We're currently looking at the last 28 days. The event count metric will include the total number of pages people have viewed on your website along with other events that have been tracked into your reports. Key events is how Google Analytics reports on conversions, so the most important actions you want people to take on your website. And since Google's demo property is for an online store, purchases tells us how many transactions were completed. In the next card, we can see the total number of users that have been on our website in the last 30 minutes. Below this, we can see any reports and settings we've recently viewed. And at the bottom is the Insights and Recommendations card. These can include automated insights, which are based on Google's machine learning. In Google's demo property, there are currently no automated insights but it's worth checking your own property to see if there is anything of interest being reported for your website. Now let's navigate to reports. We can see there are a range of different reports. These include the report snapshot, along with the real-time reports and reports for acquisition, engagement, monetization, and so on. This menu and the reports included in the menu can be customized, so you can edit this. And it's also based on the selection made when Google Analytics was set up. So if you see a different set of reports, this is because different options were selected when the property was created or someone has customized the menu. Okay, let's navigate to real-time overview. This report lets you view details about the people who are currently on your website. Data is processed into the reports within a few seconds. The geographic map shows us where people are located. And scrolling down, we can see additional insights about people currently on our website. This includes how they found the website. We can see if people are being included in any audiences, which let you group and categorize users. We can also see the pages people are viewing on our website. And we can see the events that are being collected. We can see page views and other events being collected. We can also see key events which report on conversions and any user properties. Now let's select acquisition and then overview. The acquisition reports are all about how people are finding the website. On the overview report, we can see similar details that we saw on the home report and the report snapshot. We can see the number of active users and new users. And again, we have the real-time card on the right. Travelling down, we can then see how new users are finding the website. So we have new users by the first user primary channel group. This automatically combines the different ways people find the website into categories. 
there are also cards that show sessions by primary channel group, sessions from Google Ads, and more. You can also use the links at the bottom of the cards to view the full report. And we can also adjust the date range used for the report. Let's scroll back to the top and select the current date range. You can then choose from predefined ranges or choose your own custom date range. OK, let's close this. Apart from the acquisition overview, there are also dedicated reports for user acquisition. This shows you a breakdown of metrics for the first way users found your website. Next, the traffic acquisition report shows you how people found your website to start each of their sessions. So this report goes beyond the very first time they found your website, which we've seen in the user acquisition report. Since the report focuses on sessions, we can see more session-based metrics in the table. The next set of reports we're going to look at are the engagement reports. These reports show you what people are doing on your website. This is where you can report on the pages people are viewing, events that are automatically collected using the enhanced measurement feature, and any other events you're sending to Google Analytics. Let's select engagement, and then pages and screens. This report shows you the pages people are viewing on your website. Looking at the table, we can see pages are reported based on their URL. This is the page path dimension. And the report is ordered by the number of views, so the number of page views by default. And selecting events shows you all of the events that have been collected. This will include the default page view event, along with other automatic events and any recommended and custom events that have also been implemented on your website. We're going to talk a bit more about automatic events in a moment. And if you're interested in a more in-depth lesson, I recommend checking out my dedicated resources and Google Analytics course. Okay, now let's select user attributes and then overview. This report shows you a top level summary about the people viewing your website. We can see where they're geographically located by country, the cities they're located in, their gender, interests, age, and their language preference based on the settings on the device they're using. If you find that gender, interests, and age are missing in your reports, this means you haven't enabled Google Signals yet. Next is the Demographic Details Report. This provides a granular breakdown of metrics, and we can see that the report shows us people's geographic location by country. Selecting country lets us change the report. For example, we can choose city to see the metrics broken down by city. And you might be wondering about not set. This is telling us that there are a portion of users where the city is unknown. Basically, Google Analytics has collected details about the user, but isn't able to provide this specific information we've asked for in the report. So you can think of not set as unknown in Google Analytics. Now let's select tech and then overview. The technology reports show you details about the devices people are using to view your website. Traveling down the report, we can see people's operating systems, the types of devices they're using, the browsers they're using, device categories, so desktop, tablet, and mobile, and more. So they're some of the most important standard pre-configured reports you'll find in Google Analytics. Now we're going to cover five important configuration settings you should check. And if you haven't installed GA4 on your website yet, you'll need to do that first. If this applies to you, then I've included links to my tutorials covering installation in the description below. To adjust settings in Google Analytics, I need to highlight that you will need editor or administrator permission. If you don't have the correct level of permission, 
you will just be able to view the current settings. Since I don't have the correct permission for Google's demo property, let's switch to my own demo property. And let's navigate to Admin. OK, let's select Property and then Property Details. This is where you can check the time zone and currency used for your reports. Hopefully you don't need to change the time zone as this will result in a gap or overlap in data, but it's still worth checking if these are correct. Now let's select Data Collection and Modification and choose Data Streams. Data streams are used to collect data into your reports. You will typically just have one data stream which is used to collect data from your website. Let's select the data stream. There are a whole lot of settings you can adjust for your data stream, but let's focus on two important parts. The first is your measurement ID. This is used to send data to Google Analytics, so if you're using the Google Tag or Google Tag Manager, you will need the correct ID installed on your website. And the other thing I want you to check is your enhanced measurement settings. To do this, let's select the configuration icon under Enhanced Measurement. This feature automatically tracks a range of actions including scrolls, clicks on outbound links, people searching within your website, form interactions and more. If there are any of these that you don't want automatically tracked, you can disable them here. I'm going to leave the defaults and close this. Now let's select Data Retention. The Data Retention settings let you control how much historical data is available in reports that are based on individual users. Unless you have a reason not to, I recommend setting both of these options to 14 months. This gives you more data to work with. Next, let's select Data Display and then Events. This is where you can configure conversions in Google Analytics. To track a conversion, you'll need to ensure the event is being tracked first and then you'll need to enable the event as a key event. Key events are how conversions are reported in GA4. Let's select the Recent Events tab. We can then look for the event we want to track as a conversion. Once you've found the event, you just need to click the star icon on the left. This event will now be reported as a key event and included in the key event metrics. For a more in-depth tutorial on how to track conversions as key events in Google Analytics, I recommend watching my dedicated video. And another important step is to link GA4 to other Google products. To do this, select Product Links. This is where you can link Google Ads and Google Search Console. Taking the time to do this will enhance your reporting. And when you link Google Ads, you will also be able to use audiences from Google Analytics to target your ads. We've looked at key reports, checked your essential settings, and enabled key events to track conversions. I recommend taking some time to explore your reports and look for opportunities to improve your website and marketing campaigns. And if you're ready to learn even more, don't forget to check out the extra tutorials and resources in the description. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe for more GA4 tips, tutorials and more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.